Did you know that you can turn your old phone into a DIY stream deck? Well, in this video I'll show you how to do just that. The only thing you will need is an Android phone, a tablet or some other Android device with a touchscreen and the only requirement is that the device is running Android version 5 or newer. The application I'll be using to achieve this is called Macro Deck and I can't honestly compare it with Elgato Stream Deck since I've never had one on hand but after about 2 months of using this setup I can tell you that it has every little feature someone like me would need. It's free to use and I have no complaints about it. Some of you may have already seen my DIY MacroPad video. I showed you how to build a custom keyboard and how to program it. But after I found about MacroDeck, I realized it's a much better option since you don't have to source the components, you don't have to solder anything and the most important thing, you don't have to compile a firmware file every time you want to make a change to your setup. The fact that you can change the icons is also a big plus. MacroDeck also allows you to create separate button folders so you can practically have infinite number of buttons. The only little small thing I don't quite like about it is that there is no physical button field which you get when you use a mechanical keyboard switch. The whole setup contains of an Android app running on your Android device and a client on your PC. The communication between the phone and the PC is wireless and is handled over the network. So make sure that both devices are connected to the same gateway. You simply enter your host IP address followed by the client's port and connect. Everything you have set up in the PC client will be shown on the Android app and you can press each button to activate it. First I'll show you how to get both apps running on your Android device and on the PC. Then I'll show you my setup so you get a better understanding of how the buttons work. I'll show you how to install plugins and how to create buttons, how folders work and finally how to create your own icons. First, let's install the MacroDeck client on your PC. Go to the MacroDeck website and download MacroDeck for Windows. After it's downloaded, install it and after it's installed, open the application. You can see your IP address and the port here. I'm doing this inside a virtual machine so that's why the IP looks weird. You can set the number of rows and columns and the buttons are shown here. Next, let's get the app running on the Android device. Go to the MacroDeck website again, go to the download section and download MacroDeck for Android. It's going to be an APK file and after it's downloaded, you can continue by installing it. After it's installed, open the app and try to connect to the Windows client. The PC client will ask you if you want to allow the connection, so make sure you do. If everything went right, you should see your buttons, which should be blank at the moment. Before you begin creating custom buttons, let's take a look at my setup so you get a better picture of how it may look in the end. I have a 6 column and 3 row setup which fits nicely on my display. I have a few buttons that start Python and JavaScripts, a few which open Windows applications and websites and then there are 3 buttons that use special functions to display data I need. The first one shows the time, the second one shows my CPU and GPU temps and the third one is connected with Spotify and it displays the current playing song. If you find yourself in need of more buttons, you can change the number of rows and columns or simply create more button folders. The first time I opened MacroDeck app, I honestly didn't know what to do. I tried doing something for about 10 minutes and gave up. The next day I watched some tutorials and then I figured it out. Basically, before you do anything, it would be best to download all the plugins you need first. And then when you have the plugins already installed, you will see all of the options that are available to you and it will be much easier to set up the buttons. Let's go to the plugins section and click on the online button. Here you can see all of the plugins you can install. For me, a must have is Windows Utils. It allows you to emulate key presses, run command lines, Lines, start applications and much more. So that's going to be the first one. If you want to display your hardware temperatures, you can install GPU-Z plugin. Just make sure GPU-Z is installed and running on your PC. And the last one that's nice to try out at the beginning is the Spotify plugin. You can install it, but you'll have to connect your Spotify account via the API. And the Spotify app has to be running on your computer if you want to use it with MacroDeck. I'm going to show you how to make your own buttons very soon, but before I do, there's one more thing I need to show you first. As you've seen before, you can create your own icons for the buttons. Icons are stored in icon packs and they can be installed from the plugin section or you can make your own if you wish. Go to the icon pack section and install the one you want. Then choose a blank button, right click and select edit. Then you can double click on the buttons icon and here you can select the one you want. There is a drop down menu and it's used to select different icon packs. If you wanted to create your own buttons, you will need to create a new icon pack. Click on the plus icon and give your new icon pack a name. Then you can select your new icon pack and now you'll have an option to import an icon. It needs to be a PNG, JPEG, BMP or a JPEG file. 1 to 1 aspect ratio and while designing mine, I use a canvas of 500 by 500 pixels. But you can import any picture you download from the internet as well. At this point I wanted to show you how to create buttons, but then I realized that they are already created but are just blank. So to edit a button, right click on it and click edit. As you've just seen, you can change the button's icon and here you can add text to it. The function button is located here and it's used for displaying data on the button's icon. As an example, let's add a time 
date and the day of the week. Align the label to the middle and this is our first button, which is not actually a button since it doesn't do anything when pressed, but the next one will. Let's edit another one. I'll make this one open Prusa Slicer. The first thing I need is the Prusa Slicer icon. I'll download it from Google and import it into my icon pack I just created. The icon is set and now we need to tell it what to do when the button is pressed. Click on the plus icon and select action. To open an application we can use the Windows Utils plugin. Select start application and enter the path of your application. You can find the path by right clicking on the app and going to properties, then click open file location and you'll find the path at the top of the file explorer. Once you've entered it, click ok and that's your first button that actually does something. You can see that it asks you if you want to import the application icon, which is actually a really great feature. And I'll select yes, so I can see if that one fits better than the one I just downloaded. After you've created it, we can test it by right clicking on the button and clicking on simulate option. And as you can see, the button works as intended. Now let's create a more complicated one. I'll use Windows Utils to enter a line command which starts my Python script. Then I'll use a delay to wait 500 milliseconds, start another application and then open two websites in the browser. And as you can see, it works. I don't have Python installed in this virtual machine, so the Python script didn't start properly. But you can see that the Bing Chiller application is up and running and both websites were opened. The last thing I need to show you is how this Spotify plugin works. You can find a guide on how to connect with the API in the plugin section. And when you do, you can use it as an action button to toggle playing, skip tracks, repeat, etc. Or as a display button to display one of the functions that are available in the plugin. To create a folder, right click on the folder section and create a new one. I'll name mine printer commands. While in the root folder, we'll need a button which will move us to the folder we just created. So let's edit a blank button to do that. I'll name it printer commands and select action. I'll select macro deck folder and change folder. I'll select my folder, click ok, click save, click ok. Then I can right click and press simulate on press. And now I'm inside the printer commands folder. In order to be able to go back, we'll need to create one more button that will move us back to the root folder. Again, click edit, give it a name. Create an action, macro deck folder and select go to parent. Click OK, save OK and you're done. Thank you so much for sticking to the end and I really hope I explained everything well. I had a bit of trouble while setting this up for the first time, so I decided to make my own video about it. Make sure to check some of my other videos and if you enjoyed watching, make sure to like, share and subscribe.